Hey what is up guys, I'm Gunix here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So in today's Godot tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you guys how to do the typewriter effect for your text in your Godot games. And you might be thinking to yourself, what is the typewriter effect? Well, I will show you guys an example from my most recent horror game I made called Cook Me Breakfast, which by the way, if you haven't checked it out yet, it is free on itch.io, so you can go check it out if you want to, link in the description below. But anyways, as you can see here from the warning screen in that game, the text, it appears one character at a time, and this is what some people call the typewriter effect. There are many other games which do this as well. In fact, there's probably a bunch of games which you guys have played out there which do a similar thing, particularly more retro style games which do it. So if you guys do learn something from this tutorial or you do enjoy it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and let's get right into it. Alright, so first things first, I'm going to create a new scene, and this scene will be a UI scene, so do make sure that you have a UI scene created. And now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add in my text. So go right click, add child node, and then you want to search up rich text label, since that is what the text is called in Godot, and then we'll grab this, and boom, so now I'm going to stretch this out. And I'm just going to write some example text. So you guys can write whatever you want for your text. But for mine, I'm just going to write, Hi, my name is Omegonix. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Blah, blah, blah. I like making games. So yeah, so this here is going to be my example text. And uh, I'm going to change the font size of it as well since it's a bit small. So I'm going to go into the theme override section here, font sizes, and then I'm going to set the font size to like something like 50. And there we go, so now that it is much more better displayed, in fact I might turn it down a bit, something like 45, and there we go, that seems more like it. So now when you have your text in the scene, uh, when you have your text selected, what you'll notice in your inspector menu to the right is that there is a drop down menu here called displayed text. And if we select this, we now have a few new variables here we can look at. So the first one is the visible characters variable. So what this determines is how many characters in our text are actually visible. So if I set this to something like 5 for example, now only 5 characters in the text are visible. We have H, I, then the space, since a space is counted as a character. Then we have M and Y, and then if I turn this up to 10, now we have 10 characters displayed, and uh, yeah, so that's how that works. And then we also have the visible ratio as well, so this determines the ratio of text that is displayed. So if I set this to 0.5, that means that half of the text is displayed. So when you actually change the visible ratio as well, the visible characters variable is changed too. And by the way, fun fact about the visible characters variable is if you set this to negative 1, that basically just means that all the characters in the, the, in the text are displayed, since by default, negative 1 is going to be what visible characters is set to, so yeah. So yeah, as you can see, when I change the visible ratio, the amount of characters which are visible changes, and this visible ratio variable is what's going to be essential in creating our typewriter effect for our text. So there are a few different ways of going about doing the typewriter effect. We can either do it with an animation player or we can do it in code. And I'm going to be showing you guys how to do it in both an animation player and in code today. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to save my scene since it is good to always save your scenes as you do develop your game. So I'm just going to save this scene. I'm just going to call it UI and there we go. Just save it into my scenes folder. And uh, yeah, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my parent node here, I'm going to go add child node, and I'm going to type in animation player, since we're going to be add an, adding an animation player to our scene. So now when you add your animation player, make sure that you have it selected, and now the animation tab should open. So when your animation tab opens, you want to select this animation button here, and then you want to click new. And then you want to type in your animation name. So for this, I'm just going to type in example. And then I'm going to go OK. And boom. So now we have our animation ready. So you can change the length of your animation if you want to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to 5 seconds. And uh, when you do change the length of your animation, as you can see, uh, more of the animation bar is grayed out. 
And uh, yeah, so if you want to make your animation longer, just change this value here and you'll be able to do that. So with the start of the animation, so make sure that like this blue line you have here, which you can drag across the animation, uh, make sure that it is at the very start to begin with. And what we're going to do is we're going to select the rich text label. And as you can see here, um, when we select our rich text label, there is now keys next to all our variables. And what these keys allow us to do is these allow us to set key frames for these variables in the animation player. So let's say for example with the visible ratio, what we want to do at the start of this animation is we want to have it at zero. So I'm going to set my visible ratio to zero. And then if I select the key frame, it will now give us the option to create a key for the animation player. And then you want to make sure that you have create reset track selected as well. So then it actually uh, makes sure that at the start of the animation, uh, it's always going to be set to the visible ratio of zero. So yeah, you want to make sure that you create a reset track for that. And we'll go create and boom. So now uh, at the very start of our animation, uh, the visible ratio is set to zero on our text. So now if we go to the end of the animation, so for me it's at five seconds, and then if I set this visible ratio to one, and then I select the key again to then create another key frame. Now if we actually play the animation from the start, as you can see we now have a typewriter effect. And boom, so that there is how you create a simple typewriter effect with an animation. Um, I will show you guys how to play it as well, because you know you will need to do some code in order to play the animation too. But yeah, so that there is how you create your basic animation for the typewriter effect. Again, you can make it longer or shorter if you want to. Like for example, if I want to make this 10 seconds, and then I drag my uh, end frame here, I drag it all the way towards the end at the 10 second mark. Now my typewriter effect takes longer to make all the text show. So yeah. So now what we're going to do is on my animation player I am going to create a new script. So I'm going to go new script and I'm going to call this, um, I'm just going to call this typewriter as an example and then I'm going to save it into my scripts folder. If you guys don't have a scripts folder, you can always create one. You can always just uh, click on this little folder icon here, you know, go create folder and then create your own scripts folder and boom, have it like that. So then once you do uh, select the path for your new script, you then want to go create. And now we have our new script. So it all depends, of course, when you want this, uh, you know, this typewriter effect in your text to take place. But as an example in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make the animation play at the very start of your scene. So we're going to get rid of the process function here, and we're only going to be keeping the ready function. And what you want to do is, since this uh, script is attached to our animation player, we can just simply go play, and then parentheses, and then we need to type in the name of our animation. So for me, it is example. And boom, now this animation will play at the very start of our scene. Again, of course, you guys are going to want your animations to play at different points in your game. But just, in this, just as an example in this tutorial, I'm just showing how to play the animation at the very start of the scene. So yeah. So now if we actually go play, now as you can see, when we play the scene, now our text is displaying and it's doing the typewriter effect. So now, with some games that do the typewriter effect, usually what they'll do is as each character is being displayed, what happens is there is a sound that plays, whether it be something like ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo, ooh, ooh, you know, something like that, or whether it be like some typing sounds or something like that. Well, yeah, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys how to do today, is actually how to add in sounds as well. So then as each character of your text displays, then there is a sound that plays as well. So as you can see in my sounds folder, I've got a sound here called menubutton.mp3 and this sound is what I'll be using for the typewriter effect today. So as each character of our text is displayed, then this sound will play. So what this sound is, is it's basically just a sound of me pressing the key on my keyboard. So if you want to hear what it sounds like, here it is. 
So yeah, it's just a simple press of a uh, key on my keyboard, and I actually use this sound for the typewriter effect in my game Cook Me Breakfast. So yeah. So now what I'm going to do is I'm now going to add an audio stream player into the scene so we can actually play the sound. So what you want to do is you want to select the parent node in your scene, then right click, add child node, and you want to search up audio stream player. So yeah, audio stream players, in case you don't know, are a way for us to play audio in our scenes. And so if you have your audio stream player selected and you look over to the inspector in the right here, you can see that there is a stream variable if we select empty and then go quick load we can now select a sound for us to add into this audio stream player. So for me, it's going to be menu button.mp3 and boom. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm now going to select the parent node and I'm now going to create a new script. So I'm gonna go new script and I'm gonna save this into my scripts folder. And I'm gonna call this script just visible sound as an example, something like that. Just call it visible sound. There we go, you guys can call your script whatever you want. And now we're going to go create, and boom. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to get rid of this ready function since it won't be needed. But we will be adding a variable to this scene. So this variable will be called visible characters. And by default this will equal to zero. So make sure that you have it to equal to zero at the start. And now in our process function, so make sure that you do keep your process function in your script. What you want to do is you want to now write the following. So you want to go if visible underscore characters isn't equal to, and then you want to write dollar sign. And then after the dollar sign, you want to now write in the name of your rich text label. So for me, it's just simply called rich text label. So that's just what I'm going to write. I'm going to write rich text label. And then you want to do, oh, and then you want to do dot visible characters. So basically, uh, what this line here is saying is, if our visible characters variable isn't equal to the amount of characters that are visible in our text, then what will happen is visible underscore characters will then equal to the amount of visible characters in our text. And then after it does, what will happen is now our sound will play. So we'll go dollar sign, and then you want to enter in the name of your audio stream player. So for me, it's just simply audio stream player. And then you want to go dot play, and boom. So basically what this script is doing is whenever the visible characters variable in our script isn't equal to the amount of visible characters in our text, what will then happen is then the visible characters variable will then equal to the amount of visible characters in our text and then the audio stream player will play. So now if we actually do save our scene and we test this out, let's see how it works. So as you just saw there and as you just heard, uh, our text was typing out, and we had the typing sound typing along with it. So yeah. So that there guys is basically how you do a typewriter effect for your text in your games. But as I did say, there are two methods to doing this. You can do it with the animation player like I just showed before, or you could even do it in code. So now I'm going to show you guys the method of doing the typewriter effect in code. So let's stop this game here. Now what I'm going to do is, in this exact same script, you could do a different script if you wanted to, it's all up to you of course, but I'm just going to do it in this same script here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the following, I'm going to write if, so make sure that you do this in your process function as well, I'm going to go if, and then dollar sign rich text label dot visible underscore ratio is less than one. So if the visible ratio of our text is less than one, so if our text isn't fully displayed already, what will happen is we'll go rich underscore text label, I mean sorry, um, dollar sign rich text label, then dot visible underscore ratio, and then you want to do plus equals, and then you want to enter in a value. So this value could be anything you want, but I do recommend a low value, something like 0 0.1 or 0 0.2, something like that. I'm going to do 0 0.1 as an example. 
and then you want to do times delta so then when our visible ratio is going up it's not dependent on the frame rate it's just dependent on time so now if we actually make sure that our uh, animation player here doesn't play so what i'm going to do is i'm actually just going to remove the script used for the uh, animation player so i'm just going to remove that boom and now what we're going to do is now we're actually going to uh, try out this method of doing the typewriter effect here in script so now let's go play So as you just saw there, we didn't need the animation player for that just then since we just used code. So yeah, it's only two lines of code, it's very simple. If you guys prefer to do the typewriter effect this way using code rather than animation player, that's totally fine. That's why I thought I'd show you guys just in case you wanted to do it this way as well. And so yeah, so without further ado, that's pretty much the end of this tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. Be sure to let me know down in the comments below uh, what sort of game you're making that you are using this typewriting effect for, since it'll be interesting to hear uh, what sort of uses you guys might have for the typewriting effect in your games. There are tons of games out there which do it, a lot of retro games, so yeah, uh, it's really good to do for them sorts of games. So yeah, if you guys did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more, and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.